This is Apple's M2 Pro, 14-inch MacBook Pro. It's an incredible machine, but don't upgrade to it. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and as I mentioned, this, this is Apple's new M2 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro. And I'll tell you, out of the gate, it's a great machine. It's a fantastic machine, a great size. I love the design, even though the design has not changed much from last year. Uh, but there are a couple drawbacks to it. And for some of you out there, I would very much disagree with upgrading to it in general. So stick with me. I'm going to go through the high points of this machine, give you some benchmarking details that you guys are going to love. Uh, then we'll round out with who should be buying this machine and who shouldn't be. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Let's go over the design, right? Not much has changed here. Apple is keeping the same design as the 2021 MacBook Pro for both the 14 and the 16 inch versions. On the 14 inch version here, everything's the same. On down the left hand side, you got your MagSafe 3 port, you've got your Thunderbolt ports, and you have your headphone jack. The right hand side has a SDXC card reader, an additional Thunderbolt port, and your HDMI output. Now, Couple things to note on these, the MagSafe 3 part now comes with a color matched cable if you have the space gray version of this guy, and the HDMI port is upgraded from HDMI 2.0 to HDMI 2.1, which will guarantee you the ability to use an 8K external display or a 4K display at up to 240 hertz. Other than that, the design has not changed. Everything else is the same, same trackpad, same keyboard, same screen, same face on cameras, all of it the same. The 14 inch MacBook Pro can be upgraded up to an M2 Max processor, which is a 12 core CPU with up to a 38 core GPU. You can output this thing with up to eight terabytes of internal storage, and you can have to 96 gigs of memory when you're opting for the high-end version of the M2 Max processor. Let's run through some basic benchmarks just to show how much more powerful the M2 Pro is compared to the last generation M1 Pro. Now, I wanna make this clear. In this comparison, I am comparing the new base M2 Pro against the upgraded M1 Pro. So these are both 10 core CPUs that I am comparing here. So the fact that the M2 Pro beats the upgraded M1 Pro is definitely substantial and shows that for the, at least that base configuration, you're getting much more for your money compared to the prior generation. So starting off with Geekbench 5 scores. Oh, hey, it's me from like an alternative timeline. I'm jumping in here to thank my sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X, brought to you by MacPaw. The Mac as a whole is an essential tool for work, education, play, and life in general. Developed by MacPaw, Clean My Mac X is a fantastic decluttering tool that can help keep your Mac running in tip top shape. In total, there are 29 tools built into Clean My Mac X. It can help by speeding up your performance, finding hidden junk folders, preventing it from getting malware, preventing it from overheating, plus it's a Red Dot Design Award winner, and it is fully notarized by Apple so you know that it's safe to install on your machine. Recently, Clean My Mac X got a completely updated menu bar application, which helps take care of your Mac's health with six detailed monitors that provide useful information on your Mac storage, state of protection, CPU performance, RAM, battery, and network speeds. And here's the best part. The menu bar application is completely free to download and use for yourself. But if you do want to unlock the full version of Clean My Mac X, you can use the link down below in the description and get 5% off. That is 5% off Clean My Mac X. But here's the thing, it only works for two weeks. Two weeks and the promotion is done. So follow the link down below in the description or pinned in the comments. Thank you again to Mac Paul and Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Now, uh, let's get back to the other content, right? The single core improved from 1758 to 1966. Looking at the multi-core score, again, both 10 core CPUs, we're going from a 12397 to a 12092. And I know what you guys are thinking, that score definitely dropped down. And I've repeated this multiple times, and I did see slightly slower multi-core scores 
on the M2 Pro than on the M1 Pro. And I saw this both here inside of Geekbench as well as in Cinebench R23. But again, we're comparing a higher end unit to a base unit. Um, so that M1 Pro that I'm comparing here, it was a stepped up version. So the fact that the base unit is now outperforming the stepped up version is still significant. But what about the graphics? This is very good news. So in this situation, we're comparing the base MacBook Pro M2 Pro with a 16 core GPU to the stepped up M1 Pro with a 16 core GPU. So 16 core versus 16 core GPUs here. And if we look at the Geekbench 5 compute benchmarks running under metal, we can see that we got a big upgrade from 41,786 or 796 to 46,696. A good upgrade for graphics here, especially comparing to 16 core GPUs. I also ran a stress test on this MacBook Pro. So this is the basic idea of how this works. I take the machine, I max out the performance of the CPU, pushing it all the way to 100% utilization, and I do that for an extended period of time. I monitor it during this period of time and I'm watching the internal temperatures of the CPU. I'm watching the scores that are coming back from the consecutive test runs to see how the performance is changing over time as it's getting warm inside and all of that. And I'm also watching things like fan speed um, and seeing how this is just overall running and operating, seeing if there are thermal limitations that if you push this machine to the limit for, for two hours, if there's going to be a degraded performance that you're going to see. And I'm happy to say, no, not really at all. This, runs, this does run a little bit cooler than the 16 inch MacBook Pro, so it stayed under 200 uh, degrees while I was monitoring the CPU. It was ramping up to about 3.26 gigahertz, so it is faster than the prior generation, the clock speed for that. And we were getting around 30 watts of peak draw power while it was running this test. But even from the beginning to the end, the Cinemage R23 scores barely dropped at all. I got the highest scores right at the beginning, but by the end, they had not dropped down much at all. And it's still very unlikely that you're going to be pushing this machine this hard for this long of a period of time in standard everyday use. So there is one benchmark that did not fare as well as I'm sure most of us had hoped that it would. And that's the SSD speeds. See on uh, this model here that we're looking at, this is the base model. It has a 512 gig SSD on the inside. Now the problem is, Apple had to change the memory that they're using and it resulted in much slower SSD read and write speeds compared to the prior generation. This is more in line with what we saw on the MacBook Air. But to be clear here, it is only on the base unit. If you are upgrading your MacBook Pro to the one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, uh, or eight terabyte models, this should not be an issue. We are seeing incredibly fast write speeds and read speeds on our one terabyte 16 inch MacBook Pro, not the base version. So as long as you don't opt for the 512, you're gonna be fine. How much degraded performance are we seeing? In the Blackmagic Disk speed test, the new M2 Pros were scoring just under three thousand in its write speeds and read speeds where we were pushing five and a half to five one for the read and write speeds on the prior generation models. So definitely a hit in terms of performance on the base model in terms of the SSD speeds. And there are times that I do notice things. I'm transferring files, um, I'm opening things, anything that's kind of dealing with the simultaneous read and write speeds, you're going to notice that performance hit. But if you just spend the $200 to get the one terabyte drive this problem is completely alleviated. So it is unfortunate, but if you're looking at that base model, I would very much recommend spending a little bit more. You're gonna get double the storage, going from 512 to a terabyte, and you're gonna get significantly faster performance out of the SSD. So should you be buying Apple's new 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro processor? If you have a older machine, this is a good upgrade. It, it, it is a very solid machine. But if you have an M2 MacBook Air, if you have a M1 Pro or M1 Max, um, 14 inch MacBook Pro, the 2021 models, you do not need to upgrade. 
don't upgrade. I mean, if you're on the base units, you have worse SSD speeds. If you are buying it for just the M2 Pro, it does have a good performance jump, but not nearly enough to warrant upgrading on its own. And the other features such as HDMI 2.1, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and a color match MagSafe cable don't really add up to a compelling reason to upgrade if you have the prior generation 14 inch MacBook Pro. As a general rule, I would recommend this one for almost everyone because the M2 Pro is a beast of a chip. The M2 is already fast. The M2 Pro is, is, is fantastic and people don't need the speed of the M2 Mac. So I think the M2 Pro sits in a great spot for everyone who just wants a little bit more power than the MacBook Air. I would highly recommend this, but not coming from an M2 or an M1 Pro or an M1 Max machine. They can hold off, wait for a next generation Mac down the line. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like the new MacBook Pro? Are you gonna be picking one up? And if you're interested, there are some deals that we've gathered. They're down below in the description with some discounts and stuff. Uh, in the description, pinned in the comments, check those out as well. If you have any questions, drop me a line down below or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And thank you again to Clean My Mac X and MacPaul for sponsoring this video. If you haven't already, go check them out. Try for free and get that discount. Oh, stay tuned guys. Got more videos coming your way.